in the booth. Awesome. All right, welcome back to Believe Me Later. Quick intro. Stop yelling. Lucas, yelling? JB, <laughs> Chris, Spenny, and I am Booner. We're back. It's NFL Draft Day today. When this comes out, I am yelling really loud you right are now. You? I'm are geeked you? right now. Geek. I'm geeked. It, we're recording this. What is it? Tuesday night. Tuesday and, night. And this is coming out on Draft Day. So I figured out. I, I might have a car by the time this comes yeah, out. Spenny's getting twenty five thousand dollars for a new car. Dude, what the fuck? Why do you think I'm getting so much fucking money, bro? Bro, I don't know. I don't know how insurance uh, car insurance works. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> I'll tell you right now, they're not paying me fucking million. six times as much as my car is worth. He's you pulling know, up in a, a Ford note, Bronco like Aiden Hutchinson to the draft party Thursday. On or a today. serious note, we're very happy Spenny is okay. You got smacked by a drunk driver. I did. What was it? I did. What what day was that? Friday? Uh, Thursday. 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 Yeah. On four twenty. Leaving the dispo, yeah. On four twenty. Yeah, bad bad way to end the day. That was yeah, such a good day. Such a good day. Shout out Dispo. They treated us like kings. They did. Um I'm I'm my energy is, is has been just absolutely ripped out of me. Like the Harry Potter when they ripped the soul out. You guys just said stop yelling. Now I'm like Yo, no, bro. man, it's just All like right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll yell>. All, <laughs> right. All right, well, draft week, right? Or draft day. This comes out Thursday. The Detroit Lions. Two picks, which would be today. If this comes out Thursday, I keep saying that. But they have nine total picks. <laughs> JB, can you throw the, the nine picks up, the graphic? Yeah. Yeah, we got graphics today. We're big time. It's draft day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. All right. Pick so six, today. We got pick six. 18. I mean, 6, 18, 48, 55, 81, 152, 159, 183, and 194. Brad's got a, got a full menu to cook with yeah. right now. Oh, he does. And that's a Michelin star menu, bro. Michelin, Look at that, fucking baby. tires, bro. Bro, all right. No, Michelin star <laughs> chef is the thing. Oh, it is. No, maybe, yeah. I'm and it's actually, it's actually the tire place that it does is that. All, is it really? Yeah, they invented it because... All right, quick story. I, <laughs> I just heard this a couple weeks ago. Bro, Michelin, Michelin, the tire company, invented Michelin stars to give to restaurants. So when people are driving for like in, in, to get like wheels or, or go get tires, like they have to go to restaurants to get. I don't know. There was like a story, but it makes sense if you hear it. That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Of like, they, they, it was like it was like an advertising thing. Like they did it so you know, people would go get new tires. Action to go Bronson eat or is something. a four-star Michelin chef. Who is? I, anything is. Action Bronson. Bronson related is heat. I believe it, bro. His yeah. YouTube videos of him going around. He's got that show, energy. Fuck yeah. That's Delicious. That show's funny. I've always, I've always like Never watched five minutes of like little clips and then I zone out. But that's it's, what I'm about to do when I get home. It's a good show. Watch Anson. Amazing music, Who is that? An 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 Anson? Action Bronson. Oh, Action nice. Bronson. You don't know who Action Bronson is? No, I mean, he, I mean, he's, he's not in music picture. like that. He's, he's not in yeah. cold <laughs> rap. He's wow. a Radiohead. Radiohead. Wow. Radiohead. Like the I got, I got. Fucking Radiohead. Oh, Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Oh, I heard that take to, or today. Better yeah. than the Beatles. All right. I agree. All right. But, but wait, can I tell I one agree. more thing real quick? Yeah, 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 go for it. Spenny, I saw it when I was a kid. I saw Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, and Megadeth all in concert at That's DT. Hard, when I was like 13, it was right. the best day of my life. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to it. Do we want to go straight into the draft? Or where should, do we um, want to NFL, go around the room? Well, NFL yeah. draft. Yeah, let's see how people are feeling because I, I want to see people's feelings here for Thursday. Are you guys like... Like, how excited are you? Are you more nervous? Like, I'm nervous now. Really? I would, and I'll tell you why. Because on the heavyweights yesterday, shout out Spenny, shout out Easy. Shout out. Who, shout out me. Shout out JB and Chris. Was it, was shout it out Russell me. Brown? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah shout obviously, JB, Chris. Um, but he, he mentioned the Death fact scenario. that the Lions are interested in Peter Skaronsky. Yeah. And the second I heard that, just same old lines pop in my head, just rerouting the lines and just being so excited. And for the fact that we could potentially take Peter Skaronsky at six, I don't think it's going to happen. I would be but that thought just put fear in my mind. Imagine like we've been getting so excited, even to the fact that I would be more more mad at that I think than I just than I would be at C.J. Stroud. And just for do you know, pure letdown of excitement. Do you know why that would make me mad? Is because like for the last month we've had like the opportunities to get like a Jalen Carter. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, we we've had, Strand. like, Will guys, Anderson. Will Anderson potential to drop. And it's like, if we end up with Peter Skronsky, I'm going to be like... That'll be just such a buzzkill. Oh, and, that, I, I think that's the same thing for me, at least, personally. It's the same thing like a buzzkill if they take a corner, in my opinion. Like, I, mean, I want I them to be the, excited. I can see the buzzkill factor, but we genuinely need a corner We do, we do. but, like, I, like, like, me and Spencer were talking before the show. Go get one later in the draft. Give me... Well, I actually, I don't want to give up my picks yeah. of what we're talking about today. But Let's, how do you feel today, Spenny? To technically, so today yeah, is, after, is draft day. You stood the show, obviously, Dude, so you're just talking about I'm it. I'm fucking, the I'm fatigued. <laughs> I'm draft fatigued. Like, I, I've, been, we've been, I've been doing two shows about this shit for fucking four months now. Like, 
I'm over it. You I just wanted to get to here. here. I just wanted to be here. I want it to happen. Obviously, it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be fun. We're, you know, we're we're at the Brass Rail right, or we're at uh, Fifth Ave. Have. Fifth Ave right now. You're, you're fucked up. You're, you're late. Yeah, we'll be but, having a good time um, there. I'm just ready for it to be over with, man. Like, I agree. Jesus, I, I don't know. Want... I I just love like, honestly, the draft for me because I get into college football a little bit. But, like, every Saturday I'm not st- sitting down and watching every game, per Should. se. So I think this year I'm going to try to do it. But it's just – it's the level of competition. Like, watching NFL on Sundays and then watching college football on Saturday, like, there's obviously a clear difference. And yeah. for me, it's not even that, like, I hate college football. It's just really hard for me to sit down and watch a full game. That's when it's fair. just, like, receivers are dropping ball. Like, there's just amateur shit going on. Like, you, you watch a Big I, Ten game and it's – Fucking tough. Six to nine in the middle of the fourth quarter, and it's just like hey, hey, they're not hey, as good. And we're and watching I'm good, great saying, defense. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the, there's, we're there's watching some athlete. elite defense. I'm not denying that there's not talent there, but it's just that's where you me, go scout defense. And especially the big now that all these kickers, people are like my kickers. age. Like I don't know. Like now that these people, I don't. I'm not saying like. I, know, I love college football too. I love it's just, I just weird. football. Like it's just fun to watch. I, I, I like college it. football, but I feel what you're talking about. The the lack of talent, the talent drop off. I mean, it's the same yeah. thing that like the NBA and college basketball. It's like guys miss way more shots, and it's I way like college basketball is more exciting. Yeah, though. you got margin it, it is, and it's way harder. But you see scores that are like 45 to 50. No, you're it's right. It's like guys just don't go you're out there right, and score like the NBA. It's much more difficult to win a college football game than it is to win a college basketball game as an underdog. Uh, yeah, I agree. So I just think for that, like, <laughs> best man can win like any day in basketball. And, I mean, camp for football is just way di- more difficult. Hey, this is this is t- we're, it's 10 a.m. on Thursday right now, and Spencer's already drunk. I'm not ten, drunk. Ten That's what's happening here right now. Spenny, Spenny's like four glasses in right now. Yeah. What is going on? Started early. Blue's <laughs> talking like it's actually Thursday. <laughs> this comes out Thursday at 10. All right. Well. <laughs> 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 Look at we can just trick everyone about Spencer. You already oh, know oh, yeah, repeatedly. Bro, I keep saying it that this is two days before. I thought for a second um, Spencer had like a, a a suit jacket on for no, a second. It's a flannel. Like looking from the the video at the, at the screen, it looks like a suit jacket. It's a flannel. All right, Chris, how do you feel about the draft? How are you feeling? I'm excited, man. This is my first like time actually being involved in carrying what happens in the NFL draft. Uh, it's exciting because the Lions had obviously a great season, so I'm looking forward to it. But that I'm I'm with you guys. That Russell Brown, that Dream Day scenario, uh, death scenario. What are we calling it? What do, what are we calling it? It's like it? DeathCon Five, hey, bro. Spencer. It's like hitting the right button. <laughs> <I'm panicking. laughs> well, let's get our first fight. Anyways, oh, we could have walked. Anyways, we'll let Chris keep talking. I'll dog walk this man right here. <laughs> the man don't want don't want this shit. I, I'm, oh. I'm excited. Because I think my guy, Anthony Richardson, is available for the Lions at six. And I'm hammering that point home. When, why do you think, though? Because Cause ten, you mentioned this to me before the show, and I'm curious to why you think. Ten of the last 15 drafts, the best quarterback is not the first quarterback taken. This is your chance. You have an extra first-round pick. I think everybody's getting caught with this year, the Lions having real expectations next year. They want to get the safe, immediate help of defensive tackle, of cornerback. And I'm not mad if we go that way. But at the end of the day, this is your best shot at getting an elite quarterback. And I think you should take it because you have Ben Johnson. You have Jared Goff. You have all the tools that you that, that could set that quarterback up for success. And how many times have the Lions been in that position before? You I'm, take this position. I'm, I'm with Chris. And... I want, we want to hear what JB thinks too, but I'm with Chris because there's Thank six you. or seven guys like all You're the You're clowning yourself? You're clowning him for believing in you? No. No. It's two things. It's two things. Before a, we move off your point, it's a I have support, a question. It's a support. And then there's a... And then there's a stupid one. No, that's just it's a clown horn. Thing. You got you to have like one, one being a support and okay. then two is like you're clowning okay. on somebody. So this is support. Single support. No, no, that's no, two. One. Fucking count. No, I'm making up the rules. I got the fucking <laughs> horn. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> means support. Means you're an idiot. All right, yeah, all right, I, I support then, you. I don't. I, I yeah. support you, brother. Support all right, you. All right, but quick, quick question. Fuck. So, are you saying Anthony Richardson because <laughs> you, that's your favorite quarterback, or you think Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud are gone? Well, I think. I think Bryce Young is gone, and I don't care because he's four foot twelve, so he's out of my equation, anyways. 
<laughs> but no, I just like obviously you're swinging for the fences if you if you're taking a quarterback because quarterbacks are not an exact science. So I'm going with the guy that's got all the physical capabilities and again a, a great support system in Detroit to help him build and grow. I I, I agree with him too because like would you go Richardson over one, Stroud? I would personally. The, I, would, I would I would I would actually guy. consider that. JB, how how do you feel today? Support draft day. <laughs> Draft day, I cannot wait to figure out who Brad Holmes is selecting. And I kind of feel like Spencer, like, we've been talking about this for a month, and it's like you're kind of getting dead and you're kind of over it. You just want the night to happen and the night to go off well. And by the end of the night, to at least be popping bottles. Yeah. JB's oh, been doing all the shows, regardless. too. Let's yeah. go, He's a JB. real deal junkyard fucking dog. Shout out, JB. I, I JB's this, the hardest working man in the fucking business. I swear Grinding. To God. I, I, feel, I feel the same way with the, the social because we do the social stuff, and it feels like every day we're putting, like, yeah, we different questions, and it's like people comment, and they're like, oh, you guys are asses. It's like, hey, we've been, like, We've been going for months about this draft stuff. Like that's the hot topic. Is we're at six. What the fuck 18. else are we gonna yeah, talk about? Exactly. We'll come up with something. Like, nobody gives a shit about the fucking Tigers. The Red League season's over. Piston season's over. Like yeah, and it's like we're getting comments. It's like all right, I'm I'm ready just to kind of get these players in. Now here. we can start breaking them down. Yeah, we have nine players that we're potentially gonna have unless unless we make trades. So we have nine players in the next and, couple of weeks. We're gonna be able to tweet and about you know and talk about. We're gonna murder on this show that starts after the draft is fantasy football. Oh, and I can't wait because oh, this is when we I'm, get I'm into, the best like, fantasy player. We're starting in, to in cement the, the rosters down. Preseason's coming, so now we're really gonna see who, especially in training camp, who teams are starting to like. I was ranked number oh. 18th last year in fantasy. 18th in the world. Hey guys, in the, the world. By the way, the fantasy fuck football out of here. By so the facts. In what? Like in the just, world? Just ESPN. In, fucking no. cousin. They division? sent me a letter and they said you are number 18. <laughs> yeah, out of all did the cousins, really a cousin <laughs> or your cousin? No, no, I, I can't. I can't lie. I did. I'm not ranked at all. But <laughs> self, oh self-proclaimed <laughs> number 15th in the world. Dude, you throw me through fucking loopholes. Hey, time. side note, guys. If anybody wants to join my WNBA league, buy-in is $50. Do they have fantasy? I'd rather that? fucking shoot myself that. in the face yeah. than be I would do, oh, this I is would do fantasy be so baseball fun. before that. Why would that be fun? Because I can't tell you three WNBA Bro, I did, I did, Exactly. And they're exactly. not putting it. It's the so me and my friends are going to draft gonna a bunch like, of people we don't know, and we're going to talk a bunch of shit to each other for... Three months or however long the season is. The season's only three months. You need to I think relax, three months. Chris. Jesus, three months? man. But a let's, we just talked about WNBA. Let's just, let's keep to the real sports. Let's Will, talk about the draft. <laughs> Will Levis. Will Levis. We, we have a draft. Speaking of oh, yeah, WNBA. We got a couple of them. So before we get into it, and we want to kind of put this out there going into our mock draft, Will Will Levis is rising like crazy right now. He's rising more than Boone. Shout out Boone. Or. Shout out Boone. Give Boone his flowers. Yeah, he, he did. So as of yesterday... For him to be the number one pick, he was at plus 5,000. Now he is plus 400. And for me, I had a little tin hat conspiracy here. It's a good point. And this is truly what I – I'm not saying it's for sure, but if there's going to be another Baker Mayfield situation in the next five to ten years of just why was this guy like – because going into the week draft week, nobody thought Baker was going to be one. You heard all the hype and nobody believed it, and then sure as hell Baker went number one. And with Frank Wright sitting with the Carolina Panthers, he loved Carson Wentz in Philadelphia so much to the fact that he tried to take him back in, in uh, Indianapolis. And if you look at Will Levis and Carson Wentz, they're prototypes of each other in my opinion. I think Frank Wright, he, there has been no clear guy. Usually if you want a number one quarterback and you're solidified with it, you want him knowing going into the draft process, hey, you're our guy. And there has not been that. It was C.J. Stroud for a while. It's been uh, Bryce Young for the past week, and now Will Levis is rising. And truly, if I could seriously think or see Will Levis going number one overall, and I don't think it's a smart thing to Not do a by any chance, dude. I I don't think it should happen. But if there was a situation for Will Levis to go number one in, it would be with Frank Wright. I'll tell you what, coach. I like that. That is like a good point. Like I, when you told me that earlier, I was like, "Damn, you know, it, I, it, it makes fucking sense." But was it, was there's it, no fucking chance. It's, it's there's idiotic. no chance. Will I don't see it happening forward. either. Like I, I, I mean, bro, Bryce Young's still like minus four hundred, nine minus six hundred or something. But Will Levis, JB, pull that other graphic I just sent you. Well, number two, look yes. at the number two picks. But this is what I'm saying. But, but so pull up, pull up the number. It's so if you know gambling, that's complete. It's completely different. Like no. the one number one odds to the number two odds. I'm just is, saying the dramatic of they, they like don't how mean fast him being he at, is rising, and I think there's a reason why. I don't know, but I truly think there's a reason why it's happening, and it might not be for the number one pick. 
Yeah. But for at least the number two, and I don't. I think he fits more of what Frank Wright would do than what. Uh, D'Amico Ryan. D'Amico Ryan would do. Yeah. yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong. With the gambling, like when you look at the picks, like a Tyree Wilson, he would be like plus 300 for number. Like I don't know. I don't think there's a correlation of his odds from one to two. I think like it's just like they think number well, two. If Tyree like, Wilson goes number one, I'll jump off a fucking. Building. Uh, if Tyree yeah, Wilson safe, goes brother. one, he's not doing yeah, that. No, there's def- it's definitely happening. a quarterback going one. I don't know. It's just which I mean, one? It's gonna be a quarterback. I think it's gonna be Bryce Young. I think it's gonna be Will Levis number two. And I think that's kind of like the lock at one two right now. It's gonna be Bryce and Young. G- gambling wise. Like I think, like when you look at the odds, in last year I bet on the draft, and it was like once you get to the draft, like the odds. I remember um, everyone thought what's his name was going to go, to, yeah, to yeah. Detroit. But when you actually looked at the odds when when we the draft started, I'm pretty sure Aiden Hutchinson, like that, all switched really fast the day before. Because yeah, I thought I was convinced last year Hutch was going one. I yeah, and like, then what happened? Trayvon no Walker, the, his odds yeah. ended up going in favor for number one. The but day I mean, of the even draft. like, like lo- okay, happens. so look at that situation. Like Trayvon Walker was like starting to pick up heat going number one and he went one and that was kind of in the last couple of weeks and now the same type I, of things happening with is a weird Tyree situation. Wilson and Will Levis right now. I, I think there's a conversation the, to be had about it but for the, sure. the odds don't rise in my opinion for players that are going to drop. You know what I mean? The only one that I could think of is Malik Willis and I think there's a lot more credibility to Will Levis than there is Malik Willis because yes. you saw him in the SEC against legit guys for two seasons and he wasn't overwhelmingly good but he was productive Last Ooh. season was 17 touchdowns, I think Ooh. seven interceptions. Can I give you guys a bet that I put on, and it's probably not going to hit now. Like it was two weeks ago. So first of all, when agents talk, they're so convincing because I watched a couple videos a couple weeks ago. I sent it to Lucas about Zay Flowers, and about how his. I didn't realize it was his agent talking before I put the bet on. But he was like <laughs> explaining that Zay Flowers is going to be the number one wide receiver off the board. Not no. a fucking. It was chance. a massive explanation. I saw like four videos on it. I put the bet on him to be the number one or the first wide receiver off the board, like plus 700. I put a good amount of money on it, and it's still sitting there. I can't, won't let me cash out. I sent it to Lucas and then realized that guy was his agent, and he was just kind of like gassing him up. Gassing him up. He got me, bro. I don't know what to do. Good thing you're not an NFL GM. (laughs) There's rumors going out right now, which I'm terrified for the Lions' sake, that the Eagles are getting high interest in JSN. And that we're talking about the Bengals and the AFC. Dominating with their wide receiver trio oh, and now fuck, dude. You You're have right. Jalen Hurts and they're probably gonna be they're bringing in Bijan or Jameer Gibbs I'm telling you that because they have two first-round picks and they're gonna be spending a running back I do agree with that whether it's so either pick. way they could trade for DeAndre Swift But if they have AJ Brown Devontae Smith on a rookie contract and JSN on a rookie contract and I, you dirty. really, they could have a mid defense at that point because they can control the clock however and the way that Jalen Hurts so contract he has, structure he will right have now, a, a threat at every. He's level. only like a thirteen million dollar salary cap hit. Like it's crazy. Two years. Yeah, it's insane. That's why I was saying that was my whole argument for JSN for the Lions, and you can say the same thing about Bijan too. Is like, I understand it's what not what we need, but I think in the <laughs> NFC and just in the NFL going forward, but especially with how top heavy the NFC is, you have to be elite at something. And right now, I think the Lions are very good at a lot of things, but especially what, with Jalen. What are they Lawson, elite at? I would say their offensive line, you could say, is elite. But who are they behind? The Eagles and the 49ers. Yeah. That's... So you could say their secondary. I would consider, I think the Lions, when they start gelling, their secondary will be elite. But secondary is a thing that, one, we're going to add to, and it takes a lot of chemistry. Like, because you got to trust the other guy to do his job, or you're fucked. Like, to an extreme level of, like, a 70-yard touchdown. So, it's going to be tough. I, I That... I think JSN to the Eagles and Bijan to the Bears is the two scariest thing for the Lions right now as far as outside threats. Because I could see Bijan going to Chicago because they lost David Montgomery. I think and Jalen you, Carter to the Bears. To the Bears. I was thinking that I you guys just, talked about that on your show today. If he drops so my and point you're of, there with the Bijan and Jalen Carter and they go Jalen Carter and you're like, either, either or. It's like you have to go up against them twice a year, a Bijan or a Jalen yeah. Carter. But, but my thing is, is – why I say it's scary is like, okay, you put Jalen Carter on the Bears D line. Who else do you have to worry about besides Jalen Carter? You can focus on Jalen Carter. You put Bijan Robinson in the Bears backfield, you have to worry about Justin Fields, Bijan Robinson, and Khalil Herbert, where it's just an elite rushing offense where they already were. They led the NFL well, in rushing yards this year. Yeah, They're going to add so. to the offensive line. They got linebackers now, so they can control the other offensive line better. So that's just going to come down to they're going to be killing the clock, especially with adding DJ Moore in the slot. 
And the, bro, B. get John out of here bro. gassing up the Bears. No, the Bears are so real. The Bears yeah, are bears scary. Real or not, than the, I don't not sit next year, but like I don't want to sit here. Bears, them up, bears are on the come up. Yeah, yeah the Bears wanna, are way yeah. more intimidating than the Packers and the Vikings. I don't. Oh, care. I, okay. I agree with you. I don't want to give them any gas. No, no gas on. I'm. Not, it's just a legitimate like my pants concern down, because Bijan is going to be on the board for them. And what like, you'd have arguably two the two most versatile back or. Players at their position with Justin Fields and B. John Robinson. Hey, and the I, NFL I is completely with agree DJ with you. You're, you're, con- you're convincing me something that I already agree with. B. John and uh, and Justin Fields is is ex- that's scary. Yeah. Like on the field at the same time, like I you feel don't... like they need an offensive line though. Like their they offensive do, line 100%. is fucking trash, dude. They do, but I'm just saying if they go fuck it, we're gonna dominate the NFL in rushing yards for the next five years. Yeah, and then they get Mozzie Smith in the second round, like. Offensive line, you can rebuild in a year. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I agree. Do you want to uh, – let's go into our draft then. Yeah, let's just So we, we basically – 31 we did, picks this year. With 31 because the Dolphins lost out on the pick. Yeah, but fucking losers. <laughs> shout out Tom Brady. Um, shout but, out Tom Brady for sure. <laughs> he's still coming back to the Dolphins at one point. Shut up. Lock that in. Who's your first pick? All right, we, we're, we're going to go backwards though. And we're we're going to go 31. We're going to go right. quick. But we what we did was we did every other. So Chris, let me see the Lucas, horn. Lucas did a pick. I did a pick. I'm Lucas did a pick. And if we're just being, if we're being honest, horn. I love you, Lucas. But Lucas um, held the gun to my head and Not said, true. "Pick this person. So this, this, is, this pick is this happened. person. Pick this person." And so I'm what's like, support? Oh, oh, this is oh. support. Yes. And this is clown. Yes. All right. Wait. So do again. Support. Clown. Okay. Yep. Got it. All right. 31. So I'll, I, I picked the ball, odds, man. you picked the yeah. evens. And by the kind way, I did I not. Really. The, when we were doing this, I, he was asking me what these teams need. And the, the, I would the be like, this, were this on is the, the, the board. I and could see this, the I was like, this is what I see a lot. This is what I think. And he'd be like, fuck. He said, you know, hey, Lucas would be like, oh, yeah, I think Bijan. They, they would be great with Bijan. They wouldn't be great with this guy. All right, well, what do you want me to do? Be like, no, think pick the guy. Yeah, don't, don't, think... don't listen to him. You like, should have done your own shit. Yeah, I'm just giving you advice. All it's right, basically but like giving someone advice that they're like, they can 31. Pick, pick 31. 31. We have the Kansas City Chiefs Salty selecting booty. Will McDonald from Iowa State. Um, I think with Frank Clark, um, yeah. he's get he's a little bit overpaid right now. And he Did they cut him? Frank Clark's gone. Yeah, so they got Carl Laftis, but I just think where they're going to be positioned in the draft, I don't think they're going to get a receiver at that spot of value. Wait. Um, so I got. You Will. picked him over Keon White. Yeah, I think I think he's a lot like Frank Clark. Keon White's better. I could see it, but I just think from a standpoint of what the Chiefs do as a defense, I think they rely a little bit more on strength than speed. So we got that there. Booner thirty. Uh, Darnell Wright. I mean. <laughs> I just picked Darnell Wright. This was one where uh, Lucas held me gunpoint and said, I, "Pick Darnell no, that's Wright." That's a good pick. But no, I thought it was good too because I mean, Lucas did bring up a good point. Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson's old. retired like, people, next year. Yeah, people yeah. thought he was going to this year. Like they have to. I mean, bro, you think about it too. Like that offensive line instead of paying guys, Lane Johnson just got what thirty five mil. Thirty five mil. You draft a rookie here, and that's I mean, you're you're paying Lane Johnson thirty five, and you just paid uh, your quarterback. Darnell Wright fills right into that spot there. Yeah. So. Then 29, I got Osiris Torrance. I I don't really know if he's going to drop this far, but Not just how chance. things played out, um, depending on how teams rank tackles and their needs, I think this would be a great pick for New Orleans. They need a guard, and I think he's arguably the best guard in the draft. So. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Go ahead. No, Ed. number 28, we had Emmanuel <laughs> Forbes, corner. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how I felt about it. They need it, right? They need secondary. I mean, their defense kind of. They need safety. They do, but oh, did we take what's his name? Is yeah. he on there? Oh, yeah. Brian Branch. Yeah, that was one that I would have picked, but Brian Branch already went up there at 19. But I mean, just like you can't have too much, too many corners, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, that was a good Emmanuel Forbes. I love him. I hope he actually yeah. falls way more and goes to the Lions. Yeah, I don't think there's any shot. And then a guy that I really think <laughs> should fall. I don't think he will Shut fall though. Dog. Lucas Van Ness. He did uh, spell Trash. it correctly, however. Back up. So oh. I'm saying that's why I have him at 27. I think with Von Miller getting old, and I think just how he's ranked consensusly right now would be a good value pick. I don't think long term it will. But playing at Iowa, Buffalo's not too much dif- different as far as like he's ever played in the cold before. So yeah, him at 27. Shout out 27. Number 26. This is a, this is a great pick. Go, thank you so much. Number 26, Dallas Cowboys, Dalton Kincaid, tight end out of Utah. I wanted him in Detroit so bad. There was a point to where he was oh a second. Oh, my God. Shut the yeah, fuck up. Yeah, all right, off. shut up. No, there was a point to where in the – you know, before you – let me hear me out. <laughs> there was a this, point where man. he was like a second, third-round guy a month ago, and he's just moved up draft boards after – like he is 
absolutely just like hopped on a pedal bike and rode his way up to draft There's board. There's no way. If he, yeah, that, yeah. I don't know if you. I, I just didn't. I wasn't even paying attention yeah, yeah. if you were like good Sorry. or bad. Um, but really, if you think about it, Dalton Schultz. I think he only has a year left. He's on gone. It. Yeah, yeah he's oh, gone. he left. He's at the he's Texans. Gone, yeah. So they need a tight end. Yes, that's and a good that, pick. I, I do. I love him. Not for the Lions, though. Not for, okay. No. But if it was like round three, Lions round two, the where Lions he was projected don't need a no month because ago. the Lions having a clone of him and fucking James Mitchell. All right, if they would need anything, right. they need. So a tell big me body. this: late second round, if uh, Darnell's already off the board, and you're sitting there, and he's sit, he like. Kincaid sitting there right in your face. You wouldn't have taken him in the late second no. round. No, I'd take Laporta. Third round, over him. you wouldn't no. have. Oh, take... you guys are such liars, bro. I just told you I would take Laporta over him. No, I like Don Kincaid. We're taking Kincaid him. Kincaid can't block Fuck with you. the damn. All Next right, pick. moving on. Next we're trying... pick. We got to go through this quick. 25. Just go, got... Let's just go through them. You name we off got... like five straight. Quentin Johnson because Kenny Galladay is gone. Good pick. Deontay nice. Banks of the Jags. Great they just pick. need help in the secondary. Great pick. Uh, Vikings are getting Miles Murphy. Oh, fuck, dude. Uh, Zay Great Flower pick. is going to the Ravens. Great pick. Jordan Addison is going you. to the Chargers. Eh. Nolan Smith is going to the Seahawks. Eh. Brian Branch is going to the Buccaneers. Eh. Kalijah motherfucking can't Wait, can I, can I say one thing? I think the Bucs take an edge. I, just I think the Bucs take a quarterback. You think so? They're, they're they're not there though. No, yeah, you'll you see. You guys had all of them. You'll all see this board. of them are gone. I, I do Jesus think in this situation, I, I think the Bucks are... takes Miles Murphy. I'm gonna throw that out there. Okay, well I disagree with you. All right, well Antoine <laughs> Winfield's most likely on his way out. Kalaja can't see, and then we have the. I actually really like this pick for the Steelers. Broderick Jones out of Georgia, motherfucker's a demon. That's a good pick. Their offensive line's trash. Yeah, they, I was looking at their tackles. I was like, oh my. Their offensive line about, sucks. That's why Najee Harris didn't do yeah, shit this year. They, and he's a mobile guy, so yeah. he's a perfect fit there. All right, moving to the top fifteen. We're gonna. I say we go through the top. Oh, we go. We go. We're just Joey Porter go. Jr. is sixteen. Yep, yep. So here we go. At sixteen, Joey Porter. They need help in the secondary, the cornerback position, like a motherfucker. So yeah. that one's. Uh, Skaransky, I think he's gonna fall based 15? on fifteen. Yep. If he falls, I mean, the, I mean, the if Jets you look, can't pass because on him. we have quarterbacks no going crazy. There's no fucking way he falls. I'm far. telling you, I think it could happen. Th- there's only one reason he fell, and it's because because uh, Lucas. No, would Lucas you has ever... Michael Mayer and Hendon Hooker there. Let's just let's just throw it out there, Lucas. <laughs> Hijacked I, part of this this draft and said I, Michael Mayer. Who, if you look at draft boards right now, where do you think where's Michael Mayer going in draft? After boards? Dalton Kincaid. Yes, he's going in the second, third round right now. Like I, I don't know. No, I literally no. broke. I saw PFF put one out the other day. It's and P- it, PFF's like, fucking. Shut the f- hey, I, <laughs> let me just look at these draft boards and say what I I what want the fuck here. Is that guy doing? I don't know. Do we have a problem? Well, I'll fucking whoop his ass. Really? No. Wait, what? what do you do? He just stared in here at me. He, yeah, he's yeah. just crouching right now. Is he? <laughs> He's looking in here. He's trying to see something. He's kind of freaking me out. He's taking cut a to, picture. Cut to Lucas's hey! camera. Does he know we're recording right now? I don't know. Is he behind Lucas? Oh, he's yeah. directly behind. He's taking pictures of us in here. And he just walked away. Oh, you lucky bitch. Are, are we getting... Are these trying to rob us? Oh, dude. dude. Like a real creepo. Yeah, that was right. freaky. Um, Lucas has okay. fans. My, my point here, though, is... Is he still there? No, he's getting in his car. Oh, that was weird. He literally just came and took a picture of Planet Fitness and walked away. Yeah. That's fucking odd. All right. Anyways. Yeah. All right. So, JB, can you pull that one right back up real quick? Because Lucas just went out there and grabbed Michael Mayer at number 13. I, it was my pick Hendon to begin Hooker with. at 12. Listen, no, because you had me go Hendon Hooker at 12. Because we looked you dead asked, in the eyes and said, I will you take Hendon you Hooker? If we want to do JSN at 11 because I want to do Hendon Hooker at 12 because I want to make a point about this. So, you went 11 through 13. I, I asked you if JSN is 11, and you were like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, just, he's, basically just, say, he's basically saying, yeah, Booner, you're right, just in a different way. What do you mean? We, we got clarification. No, yeah, okay, I agree, <laughs> but I still think, like, Hendon Hooker's not going top 20, in I, my th- This is why I truly think— And Michael think, Mayer's not listen, going in the first round. Listen, Hendon Hooker is going 12, because you're going to see why in the first— why I think so. I, I completely disagree with your and theory. And li- if they go defense, like I think, at number two— they are going to take a quarterback with their second pick. They don't pick. have to. I've, what the fuck? You fuck Hooker's Davis Mills. They're the getting the quarterback. They, they, okay, but if they don't have an, if they go defense at the beginning, which they very well can, go get like a Tyree Wilson, right? Like the people, we've seen that. People think they're going to get Tyree Wilson. If there's no quarterbacks available at twelve, like they're, they're out of unless they trade up. But it's and, more, and you can convince me more realistically that they trade up from twelve than them reaching on Hendon Hooker at twelve. Hey, this is why it's not a reach, and because because they could trade back from twelve be, and still get Hendon Hooker. In, if Hendon Hooker never tore his ACL, he'd be a I top agree. five pick. And but I think did. there's a lot of NFL GMs that do that. And I think if you say, all right, 
at Houston, regardless, we have to have somebody else besides Case Keenum playing quarterback for us next year. And if you're sitting at 12, Hendon Hooker, if he didn't tear his ACL, that's a great value pick. And if you can get a star defensive player with Hendon Hooker, I think Houston 20, walks out of way. 20. Can I get a 20? What? Spenny, you were here a couple weeks ago, right? <laughs> when he kept talking about value with um, – who, who, who were you riding, who, who? Adam, about value with Kalaja Kansi at six? And I had to and sit you down and wrong. scream at you in the back. No, shut and I had up. To, no, because we all saw this. That and I had I to talk to you about that. Wrong. This is the same situation with Hennon Hooker. No, he's I not really, going to go top 15. He's, he, is, he does everything CJ Stroud can do. Houston, Texas. And it's just because he tore his ACL. Can you, can you let me give my scenario? Value-wise, the Texans are better chance of trading back, getting more assets, and still getting Hendon Hooker I, at like I disagree 18, with at 22. With at 12, though, like, that is... The Commanders need a quarterback. The Patriots could easily go get a quarterback. And you could argue that the Lions <laughs> would get a quarterback there. Booner, we're Facebook friends now. Oh, shout out. You know what? I went on Facebook <laughs> the other day, and I saw, like, the friend list, and it was like everyone at Woodward was on there. I just clicked add. I, like, I didn't know your name. My real name? Yeah, I don't, don't know. No, no government names, your bro. Your name popped up. I was like, who the fuck is this? Who yeah, is no this? government names. I know. Names. I was what? As hell too. I was like, who I'm is this? I'm bleeping that out when I edit this. <laughs> it's Jacob, right? Yeah. yeah. Buena. Kerfuffle. Booner. It's Booner. <laughs> All right, right, let's see your top ten. Top ten. Top right, yeah. ten. Here we go. Because that argument, gets the Hendon Hooker thing is just absolutely outrageous. It's if not. he goes top 12... We, we can make a deal about something. I don't know what. If he goes, a blow if he goes top 15, <laughs> because I think he could easily go to Tennessee. Top 12. Too. You put him 12. Right, I want we'll 12. We'll go top 12. We'll, let's um, blow job. The other one has a shotgun under a certain uh, under a certain time until you get it, and you have to keep doing it until you get it. Deal. What's a good time shotgun time? 10 seconds. I'll kill oh, that. I'll get that instantly. Yeah. Seven seconds. Seven. Right, okay, we'll do deal. seven. Uh, actually, I have an idea. Shut up. Let's get and Spencer it has to, to do. Be let's light. get Spencer to do two, and we'll take his average time. And you have to beat Spencer. Okay. I like that. Let's if he goes one. top twelve, I'll do it. If he goes I, outside I top twelve, the, you have to do it. It'll I wanna, suck. We'll if, do top fourteen because no, I, okay, bro. Fine, fine, fine. Don't give your. your fine. You had him at twelve to the fine. Tennessee Titans. I'm standing that on That is it. your theory. Neither of you are going to be able to shock on his face. So. Hey, maybe not as fast, but average. I am. The Machine, Burt Kreischer Jr. I am <laughs> Burt Jr. I'm actually Theo Vaughn Jr., which... Bro, you are Theo Vaughn. I you am. Are. So uh, he's friends with Burt Kreischer, The Machine, so I'm The Machine Jr. That doesn't make sense. It Let's see the top ten. Top ten. <laughs> that was a very Theo Vaughn conclusion. All right. Well, okay. All right, ten to six. So and I, I fucking w- hate number six, by the way. We basically did... Number 10 was, th- th- a ah. lot of this was agreed on besides ah. six. So Bijan obviously ah. falling to the Eagles, getting go, replacing Miles Sanders. They need that replacement. We did talk about Paris Johnson. Actually, was it Paris Johnson that we just saw on TV them taking yeah. for the Eagles? But Lucas thinks the Bears are going to go Paris Johnson Jr. I would agree with that. The Falcons, we both kind of agree that they do kind of need a quarterback. Lucas wanted to trade up to they number definitely three. definitely need a quarterback. They do, but he wanted sucks. to trade up to number three, which... I think they're. I, I didn't think, believe that they were going to do that. I think they're going to wait till someone falls and just take who's ever left. See, I don't think they are, and I think C.J. Stroud. That's the perfect fit for him, Atlanta, because Desmond Ritter's there. He's a pocket passer. If they need him to, they can put Desmond Ritter as the starter at first. You know what I mean? So then they can roll yeah. with C.J. Stroud. Let him. I learn. think it's the same thing with Anthony Richardson. I think they kind but of. They're just completely different quarterback. And with Arthur Smith as the head coach, they're going to be running pro style. But Arthur Smith does like running the ball. So Anthony, you ha- I'm not saying Anthony Richardson can't go. I just think the Falcons realize that holy shit, I really don't want to wait for him. The Cardinals are trying to trade out. The Cardinals at eight, they could get a cornerback, which they need. I just think that's where they go. Number but, seven. That was kind of you there. Yeah. Number seven. Number seven I. Best player available. I did not want C.J. Stroud. Let's make that very clear. I would rather go Devon Witherspoon to the Lions. But Raiders fan base is absolutely oozing for Witherspoon. They need a quarterback badly. Oozing. That's a great so, word, bro. It's like I a 10th grade level word. No, it's not. <laughs> no, but it's not. Let's get into number six pick. Number six, and why, right. and specifically <laughs> why. Let, 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 go. Go, go. Booner's go. pick. That was my pick. Let's just make that very clear. Obviously. Number six, C.J. Stroud to Detroit. Bust. If we're sitting at number six... And the C.J. Stroud's available, and there's no Jalen Carter, and there's no Will Anderson. I have, find it very hard to believe that C.J. Stroud, who the Lions brought in on a visit, and who I'm, in my guess, who Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes really like, 
I, I have I find, <laughs> my guess. I find it very, my guess. I, I mean, I'm not in the room. I'm not you, I can tell you they. You're a lie. You don't know what no, you're talking I can, about. I can tell you, you told me a week ago go. to take Kalaja Kansi at six. I don't want to hear you. I did it a week ago. I you did. That is true. It was a week ago. Not a week ago. About, about a week, week ago. ago. And then Probably and then like you realize, oh, Booner, maybe you're right because everyone else Spenny. is telling me. Spenny's why can't the one you... that convinced me. Yeah, why, I told why... him that earlier today. He probably said the same thing as me. You just no. don't trust and have faith in me, which we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get that together before football season. We're gonna have a real problem. <laughs> That's therapy. <laughs> easy yeah. does the same thing to me, Booner. It's all right. No. This th th that he's more like easy than you. No, you, you just don't think same. I know anything about That's football. That's so untrue. You think I'm like. Booner, like, no. yeah, I'm you Booner, I know, you, but I know, you, I know, you, I know that you go, I'm fucking Booner. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Before every pick, I'm like, Booner, let's fucking relax, dude. But I am Booner. And because you. <laughs> All right, I'm Booner. This is Booner. Yes, Booner. We had an issue. We, we somehow managed to cut the audio without trying to, so. Ten, ten minutes of the audio is completely gone of our show. Don't know where it is, don't ever, we'll never know where it is. But the NFL draft is tonight. We're not gonna try to cut this up. This is the end of the video, whether you like it or not. We're gonna come out with a new episode next Tuesday reacting to it, and you better fucking like it. You and, better subscribe. And the 10 minutes was about CJ Stroud and how he's gonna go to the Detroit Lions. And it's not happening. You Brad's six. smart enough. Number six pick, baby. Salute, like, subscribe, we'll catch I'm you. I'm not on my tippy toes. Oh we yeah, when you're at 28, dude. If if he doesn't work out, if the Lions don't make the play playoffs, they can trade him because he's still on a one-year oh contract. Gosh. They can move. I Brad Holmes moved up 20 spots for a wide receiver. Bro, you're I not have, going from 28 to the top 10. You don't for a you Jared can go Goff to trade. Top 12. And then the, the, no, hold on. This hold draft on. class next 30. year is so much more we deep next year. There's so second. much more talent in, from this every one, position no, outside hey, of running back. Bro, timeout. You have to stop. Your point was C.J. Stroud can't come in right away as a rookie to play. Tell me a quarterback next year that from, in your theory, you trade up from 28, 26, up to the top 10. What quarterback is good enough outside of Caleb Williams for you to trade into the top 10 to go get your quarterback that you're going to trade for Jared Goff and he's good enough to start year one? That's better than C.J. Stroud to start year one because Drake May's not doing it. Bo Nix is going to go Nicks, late I'm in the... Away who from. else? I think you, you, you don't have one. You like can, you can't Brad say these Holmes, statements Brad and not Holmes. have a plan. Dude, next you're acting. Year. I don't have to. Brad Holmes can easily so why come are you up. Telling me you you can do it next tag. year. You can have easily, you looked at the quarterback class? I I don't have to because I that's then Brad don't, Holmes. Don't say to do Brad that. Brad Holmes, then. I easily can see Case not closed. that. You can franchise tag Jared Goff. You franchise tag Jared Goff and you take a rookie quarterback no, next year. Bro, no, because there are to me. I've went and looked. I don't want Drake May. Maybe some people do, and he might like he might end up being great, and he might end up going top five he, to where you really have to trade up and does, go get him. But like, if you have to go give those assets up, to. and in your mind you're like, I don't want to put a quarter a rookie quarterback out there to go win the playoff games, bro. If you can't trust CJ Stroud to do that, you're not trusting anyone. But Jared Goff goes next year. out there and wins. He's not going to be asking for top dollar. Can Jared, we, can we Jared end, Goff can we is not this? going to be asked to be the most paid oh, quarterback bro, in the don't NFL. Be one of those guys that says he wants he's a gonna, pay cut. No, I'm not saying that, Come but he's on, not going to ask for Jalen Hurts' fucking money. He's going to ask for 40 mil? No, he's probably oh going to ask for God. 50. JB, please save me from he this. He said 50. I just he said, said he's probably going to ask for 50, dude. 50 mil? Yeah, maybe even so 55. Why so why not take because CJ Stroud? You had, where you could get him forty million for the next four years, five I, years. You, are you gonna let me finish this, or are no. you gonna cut me off? Bro, you're just okay. Really let's move on to the top me. five. Let's move on to the top five. <laughs> we're talking about something before we move on. Can we agree on something? Because uh, at at the end of the show, we're gonna give each other hugs. We love each other, but there's one thing we do agree on, and that's at number six. To say CJ Stroud isn't there. And you're sitting there, and you're like Tyree Wilson, Bijan Robinson. This is the pick that I wanted to go to. And 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 he said he wants to, but I also like we agreed on it. We both. I'm trying to cool off about CJ Stroud we, right that's now. That's why I'm saying let's go to Bijan because we both love Bijan Robinson. Today I saw that you sent me the the link that had Barry Sanders talking about how he wants basically in kind of like he I don't didn't know, directly say he it. He didn't but. directly say it, but he said, hey, if if I know exactly where I want Bijan to go. And I oh, a running back Detroit. wants a running wants a and, running back to me, go to his team. Let me caveat to this back. because this, back. this, this is position. this is what crazy. I would like to say. And we're, this is why we're, we're I'm more comfortable. Here. We're, Bichon we're gonna be and this we're is, right now. I want you just to hear me out after this, so you can kind of see where I'm thinking. If All you right. get a running back like Bijan, 
yep. which I think would be terrific for the Lions because we just talked about JSN to Agreed. the Eagles making an elite trio. You bring in Bijan to the Lions, you now have the best rushing offense in football behind that offensive line. There's not a backfield that would be better than him and David Montgomery. Uh, would you right. like if you get a Bijan Robinson in that offense and say they draft a receiver like Jalen Hyatt in the second round? Would you say that's like, I mean, last year we were top five offense statistically wise. That has to be a top five offense. Instantly. I would say top three. Like, I would say behind the Chiefs, Chiefs and the Bengals. And, but the, the yeah. Eagles, like you said, if they take JSN, I, that's scary. Yeah. But um, but I'm just saying off a. That's a lock top I, five I, offense. Especially in the division that they're playing in, I'm taking the Lions. You, but you'd have to say yeah. that's a lock top five, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, yeah, Like, if yeah. they take Bijan, that changes but everything. But listen, I want you to think about, let's say Hendon Hooker falls. You draft Bijan, you have that offensive line, you have those wide receivers, and now you give them a year to develop. And now you have all these players that you invested high value picks in. You don't have to have an elite quarterback like you just said. And now you're going to take an elite quarterback pick on a guy who's not going to be an elite quarterback. So you bring in a Hendon Hooker this year or somebody of his caliber next year, he's not going to have to do much to progress and play because he has an elite wide receiver trio, an elite offensive line, an elite running back. So he can play a Brock Purdy role. I think if you take C.J. Stroud at six, now you're asking C.J. Stroud to go from Brock Purdy to kind of Joe Burrow, in my opinion. And he does not have that in him because long-term, that's what that's, you're that's, asking. That's a, that's a I'm, saying, I'm not saying comparison. I'm saying Jared, this is your offense because long-term. You're acting when like Jared Stroud, Goff's like a Joe Burrow, like that elite. Yeah. No, he's no. Not. I'm saying but what I will Stroud say about in that position, Jared Goff, And he's like in that same level to where it's like, hey, you just have to – and he's I, waiting a year to do it. Like, he's sitting behind Goff and he's learning from him and Ben Johnson. I'm personally taking Anthony Richardson. I, I, I'm, I'm with you, too, on that a little bit because I do think – It's just not – You have to sit – whoever you pick, you have to sit behind Goff for at least a year. Exactly. But the Anthony thing is, Richardson, probably, you have the biggest ceiling to sit for that year exactly. and really let and him grow. And if you do it now, if you do it now, the way I look at the math is it doesn't even cost you a draft pick is the way I look at it. Say but, you take Anthony Richardson. So you take Anthony Richardson, bench him for a year. You could then next year trade Goff and get a first back. I think is he not if he plays anywhere near his level this year, he gets he gets a first on the market. No. He'll get like a second or third. He doesn't have that tail. Like, Jared Goff? Yeah. He won't yeah I definitely think pay. he could get he could get a a, a week if, first. If, if he plays into his to, to Chris's point, too, and then at that point, you d- late, you didn't lose anything. Late, I agree because Brad Holmes is what has he shown us? He's shown us that he's not going to let people walk. It's the same thing with Okuda. It's the same thing now we're hearing with Swift. We're hearing strong rumors that Brad Holmes is looking to trade and trade Swift as looking. well. So that's showing me that he is of the mindset. I am not going to let any of my players walk for anything I'm going to I'm going to leave with something I'm going to make some type of deal and all this draft capital if he, if they get another pick for a swift in this year's draft ain't no way they're not moving up at some point but it doesn't have my, to be the first if round they stack pieces like that it's that is a signal that they're trying to build around golf because we talk about all the time that you don't have to pay these positions if you're there but if you are constantly bringing in those now you're subtracting that golf contract and you're putting in the more rookie no, hear contract. Me, hear me out to Chris's point because Chris is completely right. With, he's with not the golf. wrong with anything. No, yeah. I just don't so think he's going to get a Jared first. Goff, this is my point to that, though. I, maybe not a first, but he can definitely fight for a, a higher draft pick to first, second. Because I, I've said this a hundred times about his contract situation. People want to comment on it. If he does what we expect the Lions to do, go win the NFC North and go win a playoff game mm-hmm. and compete for a championship – He's gonna one contract wise. He's gonna ask for money, and that is a he. he was gonna want an extension as soon as they win the NFC North. He will ask for that. Two, that value. If that does happen, that value does jump, and that is like that mm-hmm. is a fact. Like, his saying. value will jump because his contract's gonna jump. His value is gonna jump. So you, maybe not a first, but it's gonna jump as high as possible, and it's gonna be at the peak that you're ever gonna get it again. So if you're gonna trade him at some point in the next two years, whether you don't extend him and you want to wait until the next year and just let him walk and get a, a whatever that comp, a comp pick, you might as well shop him at his highest at the end of next year mm-hmm. and go get a, a better and pick than you would a, get for a comp pick. Drafting a quarterback this specific year gives you that luxury because 100%. of the way because of the way Goss contract is structured. So again, it comes back to the idea of the free pick mentality if you're, my, if you're doing the math. What? My thing is, though, if Jared Goff takes us where he You're a Goff wanted, truther. That's a fact now. This is my thing with Goff, <laughs> and I, I fell out of reality with it, but this is what I'm going to say. Jared Goff does all the little things right 
because he's been around the league so long and he's been in an elite game, so he knows how to handle himself. And we take that for granted a lot when it comes he's to He's not a bad quarterback. But, but that's, like, yeah. that's great quarterback. Regardless of what my point is, if we are going to where we want to go, which is winning the NFC North, winning the NFC Championship, Brad Holmes is not going to move off of that. I'm sorry. Especially he, that's his it, guy when, when from Jared LA. Goff asked for 45 million or 40 or whatever 50 I, you I say, don't think so at I the quarterback position. I promise you, you Brad you Holmes can't. is smart enough to know. Like if, he don't don't no. Don't put what? that on Brad Holmes. Don't I, don't put that Tom Jared, Fury on You Brad think Holmes. the Brad you think Holmes the master did. of drafting doesn't think he can finesse a quarterback? I don't I don't think we take in for account how much Brad Holmes likes Jared Goff is all I'm saying. They like him, but there's I'm a not reason. saying it's impossible. I'm just Jared, saying it's improbable. There's a reason every single time Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell talk and get asked about him, they say, yeah, he's our quarterback, but there's always that, but if there is something better, we're going to take that. Like there, And, and, and Jared and Goff came out not. and said, yes, they talked to me at the beginning Maybe of the year. Maybe they think there is about this. Draft. They, if they think, and I've said it a hundred times. I said it last offseason. I said it before the draft last year. As soon as Brad Holmes and Jan Gamble fall in love with that guy, they will take him. And I am not going to be surprised you if think, Anthony Richardson or C.J. Stroud is one of those guys. I wouldn't at be. All. I wouldn't be. I honestly wouldn't be mad with Anthony Richardson. But if we want to seriously talk about what Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes want in a quarterback, as far as like or just any of their players, the guys they fall in love with, they're gonna fall in love with. I the think quarterback. you're wrong on what they fall in love with, bro. No, but just hear me out for a second. Because Anthony Richardson they, is they, a dog. They, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't. Yeah. I think they. I could see Anthony Richardson because he's the, he's a guy a who loves football. Too. I don't look think they look at C.J. Stroud as a guy who fits the Lions' culture and wants to be that fucking leader. I don't. I don't think any NFL GMs really think You're that CJ Stroud's going to be that tonight. Late. Yeah, tonight. Yes, don't forget tonight. You, guys, you still tonight. got your top five. You got to do. Yeah. Top five. Yeah. Run through it. Top oh, five. Yeah. Top Oof. five. What's it? All right, but here we go. I think five's a lock. Jalen Carter, five, Seattle. Yeah. That's one of those things that I'm locking and not thinking I think against. Four, no, four is not really a lock because. So I, we, our last show we talked about Will Levis being a lock to the Colts. We thought he was the perfect fit. The only way I think Will Levis gets to the Colts is if they trade up to two at this point. You, you're yeah. really buying it like that. Yeah, I, I just think – I think because Will Levis, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier in the show. He's, what, minus 200 or something to go number two overall? Minus like, 150. Yeah. Minus 150. Like, that odds have changed a ton. Texans, like we said, we know they need a quarterback. If they decide to go defense second and stay quarterback first, they probably go Will Levis. Cause it was C.J. Stroud, but he's dropping a ton. I, I personally don't get it, but I if I know one thing about America, it's capitalist, baby. Follow the money. And if the money's going one way, I think that's where people are going because everybody's in the business of making money. I'm telling you. I'm Do just shocked. I'm just shocked Will Tyree. Levis goes number one overall. Okay, beyond the, beyond the Will Levis, I'm shocked at the Wilson over, over that's Anderson. The odds are going crazy the for odd, that right now. So the thing is, is Will Levis is number one odds to go number two. Tyree Wilson's number two. He's the one sitting right back there. And Demi- I've heard things, too, that Houston, like there's been rumors that Houston and that that whole front office loves Tyree Wilson. If you look- they think he is, like, expandable. He can do anything on the field, and he's going to be an all-pro player. That's what there's it There's also like. been the reports that they love Will Anderson, too. So Yeah. yeah. It, they can go everywhere. either way, but when you go back and you look at D'Amico Ryan and his history with the Niners, they always take big edge rushers, and I think Will Anderson right now, for whatever reason, he's not looked at as a premier edge rusher because Bama had him at a five tech last year for whatever reason. There's a lot of colleges doing five that. Five tech, but the, around the Will NFL Anderson right so now, bad. Tyree Wilson is looking so at bad. like the project defensive end that can have the highest ceiling. And if there's a coach that's going to bring that out of him, it's going to be D'Amico Ryan's. Can we, can, JB? Can you pull that back up real quick? Can we talk about last week? Literally, we recorded Tuesday, and I said, what, what did I say? Does it, who was here that remembers? Said the Detroit Lions will trade up to number three and draft Will Anderson Jr. Yeah. And, and a easy day made later, a good point. Terry Foster came out and said, my inside sources in the Detroit Lions, the Detroit Lions love Will Anderson. They're off Jalen Carter. Well, Russell Brown also said that, that on heavyweights, too. Yes. Russell Brown said it on heavyweights. So really, I think it's Booner no secret the f- they love him, but... It, no. Booner was the first to break but do they that. go Where, get it? This... This Continue has been a under thing. Mock draft. Don't be surprised. Where, where is this coming? No, but, no, no. This, this was a back and forth thing. You picked Will Anderson at number three. We did no trades. We did that. But last week, remember, 
Well, JB, were you, who was doing TD in last week? Was it you, Chris? Uh, yeah. Remember, I, I said that, and then I go, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm a little over the edge because they both uh, easy, and you came at me a little bit. And I go, all right, maybe I'll take a step back. And the next day, that rumor came out. But my thing, my thing happen. is, my thing is with Will like Anderson. They're looking at it though. If yeah. if the Lions want Will Anderson, they have to go get they him, have right? To like trade they, him. like I don't trade see a him. world in which he slides past three. I agree. Right? I, I agree completely. You don't unless, see a world, but unless the quarterback, unless yeah, yeah, unless a quarterback, yeah, unless the quarterback slides up. But I got, I got, I got laughed at last Tuesday because I said I get laughed at. You, you guys basically laughed at me, and, and you all hey, laughed hey, at hey, me. We were you guys bullied me off of my pick. The Detroit Lions straight up to three to take Will Anderson. You bullied me off because of that. Do you truly to back think up. that's going in your heart? Do you think that's going to happen? I think, I think. I definitely think there's a possibility. Like, if you rank the five things, and, and Terry did this last week as well. He said these are the top three things that they want to do. One, they want to trade up, and they want to go get Will Anderson. That is who they want. They want Will Anderson. Two, I believe – I don't want to mi misquote Terry what he said. I think he said maybe he want, they want to go C.J. Stroud at six. Or maybe they just said Tyree Will. I think three was Tyree Wilson. But the number one thing he said that they are looking to do is they love Will Anderson, and they will do what they need to do. If there's a deal that they can get done to go to number three, they're going to do that. And they're off Jalen Carter, which I think yeah. is – that was exactly kind of what I said last week. You guys still – you guys were all thinking they're about remember, Jalen remember Carter. Remember who I am. Dude, Booner. You, you weren't He's breaking Booner. any news. That's He's factual. I, I literally was the first one to say that. There has been so many people that have brought up Will I'm Anderson the Lions, but we'll give we'll we'll give you the credit there. We'll give you the sticker. He doesn't want to ever give me credit. I will so give you credit problem. if it give, but he just named two other people that were saying it and that's been going around. But for they a while. said that after it, the fact, did they but, not? That was I honestly, I honestly don't know who Terry said, said it. Terry said it Wednesday right. and Russell Brown was on yesterday. Yeah. So like I said it eight days ago. There you go. Cause it's Thursday. It's draft night. <laughs> Cause it's draft night, baby. All right, but pull it back up. We'll fly through these real quick. Yep, yep, yep. And then I have a question to end it for all of us. Yeah, we got Will us. Anderson at three, obviously. Then we got Tyree, like we just talked about, and the consensus yep. number one, Bryce Young. Bryce so Young. Yep. That's the mock. Um. Yeah. That I, I think that was a good mock draft. I don't think I'm excited to see kind of how like much we hit on. It was it was, we did go through it kind of weird though. Like it yeah. Was, yeah. We definitely did. But what's your question? All right. Booner's question here. First of all. All right, I have two more things. JB, do we have time? I know you got an early morning. Do you have? Uh, let's wrap it up. Seven with JB. more minutes. Yeah. All on, right, seven ahead. minutes. Let me get two minutes here. I have a quick theory here, and I text Jeff about it from the Morning Woodward Show. Shout out. I text him about it yesterday, and he said it could be a legit. So, we heard that Brad Holmes is looking to trade back from 18. Correct. Mm -hmm. This draft isn't like that stacked after 16, 15, 16. So the, 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 the fact of trading back to me isn't like, oh, like, like we're probably going to get a same type of player. Do you think Brad Holmes is shopping that 18th pick to go back to kind of set the market and kind of lowballing people to go back to set the market so he has an opportunity to trade up from 18 at a cheaper price? No, I think he's doing no. it to invest in the next year. I think he's doing. I think he's doing it. Yeah, I think he's. If you're looking at a at a 16 player draft or whatever, but there, then I think if you're 18, I think you're saying, why don't we roll the dice and try to get a first for next year and enter that uh, that supreme Caleb Williams okay. because and then you because know nobody you because nobody expected the Rams sense. to be as bad as they were this year. So in football, worst to first. Yep. First to worst happens every single year. Why not roll the dice on another team for a, for a, a mid pick, I especially like when you have the talent that you have? We're on the same page, and I think this is exactly if this happens before the draft. That's what I would you can do. You can sure as hell bet they're not taking quarterback this draft because if they do that, and I think this is the whole reason to do, you now have two first round picks. And now, like you were saying, it's really hard to. If you have two first round picks, you can trade into the top 10. Whether it's at nine, whether it's wherever, yeah. and if you have a stacked roster around you just them, can't like get you to do, one. yeah, you can't get to one. You probably can't Whoever's get inside. Just Williams. because of the teams picking there, you're not going to be able to probably trade inside the top three. You mm -hmm. could, but it's going to be really hard to. And so that's why I'm saying, if you can do that, don't risk it for C.J. Stroud. But let's not get on to more of that. No, no, I, yeah, yeah, let's not get into <laughs> C.J. Stroud again, brother. Um, all right, my last question. I want to get. I'll go, go around the room here. At, yeah. Draft night, draft day. Which move? What's the, what move do you think Brad Holmes will make that's gonna just absolutely shock Detroit Lions fans? So JB, we'll start with you on this one. Oh man, like kind of like a hot take move. Hot take move. 
I believe he jumps up to three on draft night and also trades away Swift same night. Ah, you do purge with one stone there. That's, that's a little lukewarm to me. I feel you like know, what do you think, no. Chrissy? I, 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 I think moving up to three is a risk. But I don't know. I don't know about a, a shocking one. I do think, though, I do think a very lukewarm thing is he's going to package some picks and move up at some point in this draft. I think so, whether it's whether it's in the second round or in the third round or maybe even late first. He's going to do some type. Move up is happening, I think. I think yep. you can book that with the extra pick you got from Okuda and possibly one extra pick you're getting from Swift as well. So I, I could see that. Well, my dream scenario, a totally different question, but I just want to put this out there. My dream scenario would be the Lions trade up, get Will Anderson, trade back up again, and get Anthony Richardson. I would love that. Those are my two fair prospects. Like that, I, really. I want I, that. That's, that's going to be my bold prediction. But mine, I want that so bad. I mean, it's not too bold, but I truly think if there was one, it would be Bijan at six. I think if Carter and Anderson are both gone, I think they prefer Bijan Robinson on their big board over any of the quarterbacks there. I, I like that. My my bold prediction, the Detroit Lions end up with a quarterback in the first round of this draft, whether it's C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson. I think they, if one falls to them, I think they, they just pull the trigger and do it. I think they've been preparing for it. I think they know they need to do it this year. They're in the best chance to do it since they like they won't be in this opportunity again. So I think they end up, I think we end up with C.J. Stroud in Detroit Friday no. morning. Those tests came out. Brad wanted to Those trade Those tests, they came out on the Pat McAfee show. I'm pretty sure they're faulty tests. Nope. I'm I'm ninety percent sure that you guys talked about that on the. They, they were they were real uh, tests, but like I don't. I'm just saying. I think the test results were messed up. But I think those tests point out the mental flaws that people. I don't think you have. understand what I'm saying. The test results. All right, let's wrap this yep. up. JB yeah, needs to go. <laughs> all right, appreciate you guys all tuning in. Draft day. Enjoy the draft tonight. This will be out after uh, the morning Woodward show. So enjoy enjoy the draft tonight. Appreciate you all. Uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Peace. Peace.